Okay, welcome back to this second in a series of lectures on financial statements, Tony Liberatore. And in the last lecture, of course, we ran the bases one time so you could see the general set of financial statements. Uh, and now we're going to look at the, the peanut example in a little more detail uh, of moving from the third. All right, now it's your turn. I asked you to practice a little bit last time, but let's practice here together. I had the beginning balance sheet. Of course, you have the picture in your head. Home plate uh, is the liabilities, the capital that we have to acquire. First base is the stuff or the assets. These things have to balance out. And we can add these pieces in. So take a peek and begin to add in the elements into the balance sheet. So since we're starting at home plate, let's acquire capital. I have a note payable of 10000 That's the what we're borrowing from the bank. Uh, there's a lot of places to borrow money. We'll talk about more about that later. Uh, and as owners, uh, we're going to contribute 9500 So that's equity. So now we have debt and equity. For total equity of 9500 and total capital of 19000 500. So we're at first base, acquired our capital. This is the extent of the money we have available. And so now we move to first base to acquire stuff. Right. Well, we're going to buy the inventory we have here for peanuts. That's 10,000 in this particular case. And we have 5,000 in equipment. What's remaining? is that I've already I've written checks for 15,000 that means I have 4,500 remaining in cash for total assets of 19,500 well this is pretty straightforward assets have to equal capital capital is only the, the available money that's in the company to purchase these assets so liabilities what you owe to people assets what you own and this is a beginning. Now this is a stock. So first base, second base. We've got our beginning balance sheet. First base, then we need to begin operating. And the first order of business there is to make sales. So we're going to sell peanuts. Uh, our sales here that we have, you can pick those out on the, the numbers. That sales of peanuts is 20,000. Now we're going to assume that uh, we're using up our inventory. So we've generated sales at second base. We go to third base and we say, well, what, what, how have we used our revenue in this particular period, week, month, year, etc.? And we've used some of the funds that we have to replace our inventory. So we started with 10,000. We're just going to assume that we use it all just for simplicity of calculations and so here's 10,000 in cost of goods sold I used that language before you might have picked it up this is the cost of our peanuts it's the cost of the goods we're selling we assume we had an inventory of 10,000 we used it all we took 10,000 of our revenue went out and bought new inventory and so our gross profit obviously is 10,000 this is an important number for any business that has inventory uh, because you can see this the, the the lower the inventory cost the lower the cost of goods sold the more gross profit you have so it's uh, easier to pay your bills uh, the higher your cost of goods sold the less your gross profit and the more difficult it is to cover your operating expenses All right, so here we have gross profit <clears throat> we have other expenses here at third base that we want to control, and I've added some in, and I want to explain those. Wages, of course, here we have 5000 We pay our labor, workers, we pay rent of 2000 over the period. Again, this could be, say, a, a week or a month. It's a given period of time. <clears throat> but we also have to pay the bank. So we borrowed money, a note payable, of $10,000. And uh, the payback of this, as you can see in the, my little explanation, is that you pay back 
the 10,000 which is called principal and then you also have to pay the price for borrowing the money or what's called interest uh, so the interest part is entered into the income statement um, when you take accounting you get a deeper look at this but you can think of it as the fact that here's the cost of funds for using it for that period that's kind of the flow of expenses for this period uh, our interest here I just put it in as 5% uh, 5% of 10,000 is $500 so now we have to write a check to the bank for $500 so we, we've taken our 10,000 and and begun to pay our bills 5,000 to wages 2,000 to rent and 500 to interest and so that's 7,500 all right now you can see you have 2,500 left that you didn't have to commit for expenses I have another element in here uh, to explain and that's depreciation you're probably familiar with that term you've heard it before but what we have here is the fact that you purchased some equipment you had a roasting cart of five thousand uh, dollars there are a lot of pieces of reasoning behind this but for tax purposes the IRS allows your company to claim part of this equipment expense of five thousand as an expense you, know, you just heard the language I said expense expenses are the, the, this portion in the income statement so when I say expenses you think of this portion in the income statement depreciation says that okay you bought this equipment will let you claim part of that cost in this period as an operating expense I'm just going to take 10 percent here because it's easy to calculate but depreciation will be different on different kinds of equipment and buildings it will be determined by the IRS there'll be schedules depending on the life of the equipment you know a house lasts for a long time but a computer system a shorter period so you have different kinds of depreciation schedules but let's just take the 10 percent so I have equipment on my books you have that picture in your head of the balance sheet I've got my equipment on my books of 5,000 the IRS says okay you can claim 10 percent of that as an expense so we'll add that in here I'll add in 10% of the book value, that is the value that's on our books, and that's $500. Uh, so this raises your expenses. So instead of $7,500, we have total expenses of $8,000. But let me ask you, did you write a check for the depreciation? And the answer is no. So we would call this, within the income statement, a non-cash expense it allows you to increase your expenses that you're reporting and if you look at this you know you can realize that this reduces your net income you think about that for a second if we didn't have depreciation our total expenses would be 7500 and our net income would be 2500 but because we have depreciation a non-cash expense Mm -hmm. Our expenses are eight thousand. Our net income is two thousand. Great. So why, why is that good for a business? Why do we account for it that way? Well, out of this net income, your profit, uh, you're going to have to pay taxes. I don't have them in here because I don't want to add those pieces here. I'm just trying to get the, the basic scoreboards in place for running around the basis. But you would we'd have to pay taxes on this so what depreciation does is a non-cash expense this allows us to increase the total expenses in our income statement reduce our net income and therefore reduce our taxes great well this is nice this, the idea is you have to replenish the equipment so you have that built into the income statement so here we are we've made it to third base and we have net income of two thousand and this will take us home and we can use this again so let's look at that let's just run the basis home first second and third I think you can see this in your head home base we raise the capital this is what we owe this is all the people side equity of 9500 debt or note payable of 10,000 for total capital of 19,500 
and we could call this equity capital and debt capital uh, and this is the all the funds we have raised this is the source of our funds we're going to use these to get the first base and acquire stuff and the stuff is what we own assets equipment we write checks for equipment and inventory we have 4500 left in cash to help us operate and we have total assets of 19,500 so the basic accounting equation is pretty clear to you assets have to equal capital total assets equals total liability plus equity no big deal this is the beginning home plate to first base and we begin operating we head to second base and this is called our top line top line sales or revenue it's the first line in the income statement so we call it top line when somebody says what's your top line you say well twenty thousand dollars from this we're uh, controlling and paying our bills and expenses we had the cost of goods sold and that's the accounting language we used all the peanuts we re re repurchased the inventory of ten thousand and we have gross profit of ten thousand and from this we're going to pay our expenses I have total expenses of eight thousand and to remind you one more time this this depreciation is like a fudge factor it's a non-cash expense it allows us to inflate our expenses and reduce our net income for tax purposes and we've generated the profit and this will take us back into uh, the balance sheet because we can contribute this back into equity and we can run the basis again so here we are one trip around the basis right now that's all there is to it we could go look at more sophisticated things and you wouldn't know all the categories etc but you'd have the idea of what we're measuring here how are we performing okay so add these in I, I've got some at the bottom a little exercise for you just take a look at this we could start because we're thinking about going from home to first to second to third we can enter things in in that fashion too so let's enter in our capital owner's equity of 29.5 so that's our total equity equity of 29.5 for our beginning balance sheet our note payable of 13.5 gives us $43,000 in liabilities plus equity or capital so how much stuff can you have? 43,000 oh, what kind of stuff do we have here? 7,000 in inventory 28,000 in equipment that leaves us eight thousand dollars in the bank for cash for operating and we have total assets of forty three thousand so first to second open our doors to do business uh, oh that was home to first now we're going to second excuse me So we open our doors to do business we're moving from first to second so we have sales here of twenty nine thousand we're going to use all the inventory just for simplicity uh, of the calculations uh, our cost of goods sold then is seven thousand that leaves us gross profit of 21. We have to pay our wages of 15. So we write a check for that. That only leaves 7,000. Hopefully we don't have more expenses than 7,000. Rent is 3,600. Interest is 600. And depreciation, again, we're just using 10% of our equipment cost. So we have the simplicity. We could get more complicated with the depreciation schedules, but we get the idea. 2800 so we have total expenses now of 22,000 whoops what happened here gross profit of 21 but total expenses of 22 so on our books we have a loss of 1000 and uh, one of the common ways of entering a negative is in parentheses and in red here so we can see it right away instead of a minus sign so negative net income of 1000 it would be interesting to just look at this for a moment and say, well, what's happening? Of course, if we went home with the 1,000, minus 1,000, that's going to eat up what we put in. We have 1,000 less than in equity when we get back into the balance sheet. But did we really lose money? Mm -hmm. Did we have to have cash coming back in in order to support what we were doing? Well, we can see that the, you know that depreciation is a non-cash expense, correct? So did you really spend the 2800 
The answer is no. So we have to do a little bit more to understand what's happening in the company here, uh, because that 20 we didn't write a check for 2,800. So if we recast the accounts, they might look a little different. Okay. And we're going to get to that point in a bit and try to look at what's happened with our cash. But let's get this part of it straight first. So here's an exercise. I just scrambled some of the things at the bottom. Uh, but put them in. Let me give you a second to just look at that. Again, we can run the basis. So start at home. Go to first and second and third. So let's take a peek at that. All right. Note payable of 400000 Owner's equity of 400000 so we have total capital of 800000 How much stuff can you have? Obviously, 800000 So let's go to first base. We've got equipment of 280 Inventory of 450 and that leaves a 70 in cash. We need some kind of cushion. And so we have total assets of 800000 Going to the top line, sales of 900000 We're going to use all the inventory, so our cost of goods sold is 450 and we have 450 in gross profit. All right, now we're going to pay our expenses. Oh man, we have a big wage bill, 400,000. This could be dangerous, right? You already spent 400,000 on labor and you only have 450 in gross profit. Rent of 100,000 and we already are spending more than we're taking in. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is if you have 500,000, you're actually writing checks, but you only had 450. Where's that coming from? Well, it's going to come from your cash because you had it in the bank. So good thing you had some kind of cushion. And we're going to have to look at this relationship in more detail. We started to see it in the last set of slides. But now let's pay interest and depreciation. So we have total expenses of 550. And so our net income is 100,000 in the negative. And by now, you should be wondering if we had enough cash or how how do we account for all that when we're doing the account? So we need to get a little more sophisticated, correct? And we know that depreciation was a non-cash expense, but you have to have cash to operate. So somehow, we need to measure this. So did you add to cash or draw down to cash? Well, here we're drawing down cash. Hopefully, we have enough to draw and keep us in business. And if I just take you back for a minute to think about the balance sheet, uh, where did we get the cash anyway? Well, that was because we raised the capital. 400000 in equity and 400000 in note payable. And after we got all our stuff, we had 70000 left in cash. So the question is, did we raise enough capital to have enough cash to weather the bad times in the business? Hmm? An issue that we're going to take up in uh, future scoreboards. Okay. Well, just as an aside, how much here we put in four hundred thousand and, and we borrowed four hundred thousand, but borrowing the four hundred thousand from a bank, the bank's going to want that money back, uh, and so you have to have something that they can get back that's worth four hundred thousand. Hmm. Well, they'll lend you money on the inventory and on the equipment, so these physical assets determine how much you can borrow, but you may have personal assets like you own a home or you have cash in the bank, etc. Uh, and these things you'd have to pledge to get the loan. So let's be clear that, that your assets and equity determine how much you can borrow. And these topics will come to in, in a little bit. But as you can see here, you need to raise enough capital to have enough cash to handle bad periods in the business because you don't want to run out of cash. So in this case, we'd introduce a new concept. We'd say that if you had enough capital and enough cash to weather the bad times in the business, we would say we had enough capital or that we are well capitalized. Get it? So when you hear this business term, well capitalized, it means you have enough capital in the balance sheet to give you a cushion of cash in case you need it for operating the business. So well capitalized. Get it? Uh, Undercapitalized would mean we didn't have enough capital 
capital being the liability and equity side. Didn't have enough capital to provide enough cash to handle these adverse conditions. So here you've learned by looking just at the scoreboard some of the constraints in the business operation and why you would want to have sufficient capital and cash uh, to maintain the business in p slow periods or in difficult periods. All right, so this is once around the bases and we've learned some new. Uh, we're going to go here then uh, into the next discussions, the next lectures to look at getting back home. Do we have enough cash? Can we survive? And we have to add in some new scoreboards or financial statements. So see you in the next lecture.